You're asking that question about Jakob, the big head scientist. That is such a big story that I think I'm going to read some stuff because it's a very big story, right? So you can find that story um, for those who have um, the Holy Tablets, right? In chapter 16, the underworld, that's the chapter. The name of the chapter is chapter 16, the underworld. And you can see uh, a picture there of the Donakil. Now, I'm going to read some information. The best book really that goes into the details of the Yakub story is the book called Shambhala and Agatha, um, Cities Within, right? The Cities Within, because the planet Earth is hollow, right? And there's a diagram called the Hollow Earth. But that diagram explains about how the planet is hollow. And when we say hollow, there are actually caverns. So depending on how far you're digging down into the center of the earth, there are caverns on the way. And that, that map called the hollow earth, you can Google it and you see it. There are caverns in between, not right in the center, but like in between as you're going down. Many, many different caverns. And those caverns have been there for a long time. And you have different extraterrestrials that live there. And the Donakil, who I've um, shown the picture of, is one of those beings. Then you have like the, the Duanis, yeah, the Duanis, they look like that. They're like, they're like porcupine beans. They, they are very smart. You have the Teros, yeah, the Teros, they look like that. These are like the cone head that you would have seen in like Star Trek and certain movies that depict these different beings. But the Earth has a, a, a grid system, right, as you can see there. There's so much information. I'm just building up to then go into that story of, of Yakub because... Jakob, who's referred to as the big head scientist, he came about as a product of a mixture between the Donakil and the Teros. So yeah, that whole chapter, if you read the Underworld, chapter 16 in the Holy Tablets goes into it. And the book Shambhala and Agatha, um, Cities Within, that goes into more detail. But what I'm going to do is, again, from even the Melanonite children, which is scroll number 133, that goes into it. So what I'm going to do is just read an excerpt and then talk about Yaqub. All right. So the question on page 43 says um, descendants of the Deros, right? It shows you the, the Deros, which I didn't mention, but they're like the obese looking types of beings. But then there's a question. You mentioned two other groups of beings earlier. The Donakil. All right. I'm going to write some of the words that are quite hard to maybe know. So the Donakil and the Tero. Yeah, when we say terror, we put the pr plural and we say teros. Yeah, but it's terror. Who are they? The answer is the Donakil, whose original home is in the eighth planet, Risk. Right, so the name of the planet is Risk. This is where um, our master teacher comes from as well, right? It says the eighth planet, Risk of the 19th galaxy, Ilion. Ilion is I double L Y. You, Ilion, right? That's the name of the galaxy. Have an abundance of melanin in their skin, for they are related to your forefathers, they, the woolly-haired beings, those who bear nine ether, the Anunnaki, right? Again, remember, these terms, th this is when he was still teaching us the, the Sumerian doctrine and the terms that were being used, such as Anunnaki or Elohim, which we obviously know there are different, different species. And, um, you know, we know them as the Parnatharu today, all right? They are descendants of us, all right? Who are the Shuyuk? The Shuyuk, that's spelled S. H U Y U K H. The Shuyuk. These are the elders, right? The elders, the Riskians. It says, We left some of our hybrids on this very planet Earth. They are your Donakil. They took up residence within Shambhala, right? So remember when I'm saying that book's called Sham, Shambhala, which actually means scented by Allah, depending on which language you're using to translate that word Shambhala. 
and that's the book I was referring to. Okay. The center of the earth is a special base controlled by the donacle. And just like the melanin bearing beings of the Watusi of the planet Earth, Watusi, Watusi of the planet Earth, the donacle too are tall. See, the donacle are related to the what most people know as the Dongola. We'll come back to that. Right, so the donacle have very large craniums, meaning that they have very large heads, right? The terror are also a group of benevolent beings who lived in the adjacent cavern to the Danakil. The Sunanins or Tero, which is a short for, the word Tero is short for integrative or constructive, are a subsurface race that usually keep the Dero in check. In order for the Tero to keep their sanity, they bore further into the earth. However, due to the crossbreeding, the Tero took on different forms and others look so human they can come to the surface and not be noticed okay so it goes on and it says from the pictures it appears as if they have oriental features and then the master teacher Panabab Yanun says allow me to explain a lot of mixing in took place in the heaven or what you refer to as the heaven actually the tarot come from a planet called Jomon so the tarot comes from a planet called Jomon J-O-M-O-N Right, Jomon. In the star constellation called the Red Giant, or the fourth brightest star, simply called Arcturus. Again, you can find Arcturus in the Bible if you look at um, Job 9, 9, Amos 5, 8. You can find the mention of these constellations. So Arcturus, which is the Boots constellation. The atmosphere on Jomon contributed to their children's breeding defect as well as congenital heart disease and poor digestive system, on unstable immune systems and are more likely to get leukemia. So people of the planet Earth normally have 46 chromosomes. However, because the Teros have 48 chromosomes, their structure is so different. When mixed with certain humans, it resulted in a defect called Down syndrome, right? So you know Down syndrome from different races, they, they have the same traits where the individual, right, has 47 chromosomes. So because of the 46 chromosomes of the humans and the 48 chromosomes of the Teros, you know, you get individuals that come out and they have 47 chromosomes and this is where the result of Down syndrome comes from. And it can be found in any race on the planet Earth. Just as the Tero has many races, the Tero that have an abundance of melanin in their skin are descendants of the Shuyuk. And those that lack melanin are the descendants of the Flugorods, right? So the Flugorods, the Flugorods are a species of Europeans, if you want to look at that, use that term, that came before the, the Canaanites, yeah, or from Canaan. These were like 2,400 years before the Canaanites or the Canaanites, and they were 8,000 400 years before, right? So they would have been 8,400 years ago, whereas the Canaanites are dealing with 6,000 years ago. So that's why 2,400 difference in terms of the time. Okay, so let's carry on. So it says that of the Shuk and those that lack melanin are the descendants of the Flugorods or the Halabines or Hulub. Questions. You say the Tero who have melanin in their skin are descendants of the Shuyuk. And those that lack melanin are the descendants of the Flugorods. Do you mean that the two tribes mixed in or are they a product of one or the other, as in the case of the Adamites? The answer, it says, the chief of the Donaku called Raboni Fukur. Let me just write that name down. So the chief of the Donaku, his name is F-U-Q-W-R, right, right? So the chief of the Donaku, that's his name. And he's the black seed, married a, a, a Tero, a brown seed chieftain's daughter named Lucianus, right? Lucianus. So that's an L. Um, right. So he married the brown, um, the brown seed chieftain's daughter named Lucianus against her will. 
This is where the whole story of Yaakov starts from, right? So, against her will, just to establish peace in the caverns. For the Donarchul were being attacked by the Dero. The Dero, those are the like the obesity looking ones, right? So they were being attacked by the Deros. The Terror was supposed to keep the Deros on the check, in, you know, in controls. But they were being attacked by them. And they were very violent and destructive and aggressive. So the tribe wanted to bring about a peaceful coexistence. Thus the chief of the Terror, whose name is Lamsa. Yeah, the chief of the Terror. Lamsa. Okay, so because of wanting to bring about peace, what they decided to do is Lamsa gave his daughter to Fuqua, who's the chief of the Donakil. So he gave the daughter so that they can marry, and um, his daughter's name was Radia. Yeah, Radia. Let me spell her name. Radia. Right, so he gave... His daughter Radia to Lamsa, chief of the Taros, to marry his oldest son named Hatif. The question is, did Lucianus have any children by Fuqua? The answer is no. Lucianus bore Fuqua no children. She, by shadow hour, left the caverns and went to the surface and sought out Fuqua's brother. Fuqua's brother's name was Yishak. People say, you know, it became Isaac, but Yishak or Yishuk. She saw out Fuqua's brother, Yishak, and Yishak lived in the best part of the planet, the enclosed garden. She was welcomed by him, who hated his twin brother. So Yishak's bro twin brother was Fuqua, and she, he hated him. All right, so Yishak, even though he knew it was wrong to take Luciana's, as his own, he did. So um, that's the picture of Fukur, and I'm going to carry on. Like I said, it's a build-up to the story of Yaqub, and it's very important to know, to know this background. And that's, that's Lamsa from the Terror, all right? And I'll show you a picture of how this is all of them. So you have, that's Yishak, Lucianus, the mother of Yaqub, this is where it's getting to. And then this is Radia, the daughter of Fuqua. And then you have the son, Hatif, right? Who was originally supposed to marry her, but obviously she ran away. And then now we get into the meat a bit. This is the, the picture of the big head scientist known as Yaqub, which became, Yaqub became Jacob, and um, in other stories that pick up. So, so the, the question goes on, it says, were they the only two children? No, Fuqua and Yushak had five other brothers named Amo, Hasi, Rama, Aksad, and Tunde. All save the first two stayed within the caverns, but Amo, who was also a runaway, he lived 20 miles outside of the enclosed garden at the site where the the bodies of Adam and Eve are buried called Mount Arafat. There was originally a village within with an illegitimate birth between Yishok, his brother's Fuqua's wife, Lucianus, occurred. Okay, so this is where, carrying on with the story, Lucianus was mad at her father, Lamsa, for giving her away because she wanted to marry a terror like herself. Because she was angry, she had a child by Yishok, the disagreeable, yet reformed brother of Fuqua. She did this so that the child would be of no benefit to her tribe. Many thought him unpleasant to look at. This is why. Now it's going into this is the story of Yaqub. Yaqub, who was born hydrocephalic, having the head twice the size of the size of his tribe members, the Donarkul and the Teros. Because of it, by no fault of his own, he got much attention. Because he had the head the size of two men, when he grew up, many referred to him as the big head scientist. Right? So he was scorned, mocked, thus he wanted to get revenge on his people. He owed 
his peculiar appearance to the fact that he was mixed for the Teros, right? Because the Teros have the, they have that kind of like, um, you know, the cone, cone head. Yeah, so the Teros look like that with the cone heads. Yeah. And then you had, obviously, the Donarkil, they had just round, round heads. But he came out, he came out, with two brains. So, so they already had big heads anyway. So the mixture of these two made him look different. But his wife, Luciana's, was herself disagreeable from the tribe of agreeable Teros, who had a dome-shaped skull. This combination produced the unsightful Yakub. The Teros lived in an adjacent cavern to the Donakils. The terror, Lucianus, refused to stay amongst the Donacules, for she was always teased about her cone-shaped head. Thus she came to the surface to seek out the surface Donacule, and this surface-dwelling Donacule brother of her husband, Yishak, was abstract-looking among surface-dwellers, for his cranium was extremely large. This mixture gave birth to Yakub. Yet they were the wisest of the wise in that land. They referred to them simply as the aliens because of their contact with the Pleiadians. Not only did her son have a head the size of two men, but two brains, both activated by visitors from both the Aldebaran and the Pleiades. His name was called Yakub, who was also known as Yakub, Yakub, son of Yishak. He is also known as Yakub, as well as Yakub Har or Yakub El. He is known as Bar Yishok. His mother's name was Lucianus, the terror of the original tribe of Lunarians who came to this planet and lived be beneath the surface. She was not in agreement with Terror marrying Donakil for political reasons. Rebellion being weak and wicked, her trials and tribulations led to her desire to destroy men. She did not know that this was prophesied by the wise 24 scientists called the Magus or the Magi, who by the stars charted this birth 8,400 years before it actually happened. He was born in his uncle. His uncle's name was Amon. Okay, let's carry on. So, yeah, in his uncle Amon's house, Right, that was his uncle Amos' house, located 20 miles outside of Becca. He returned at age five, determined to create a new people and teach them to rule for 6,000 years. Now, this is how he got his revenge, right? He, or tried to get his revenge. What really happened was this became the opportune time for disagreeable Pleiadians to tap into his brains and inspire an unsightly thing. He was led to have faith that he could create a race of people that would rule over his own people and then the whole planet. The people around him that got ear of his diabolical plan would ask him, will these people be wicked and warlike? He simply answered, only I know that answer. You do not. He knew that he would be their God. The question is asked, when did all of this take place? Answer. He got his idea 8,400 years ago, B.C. The process would take 600 years, which would take him to the year 7,800 B.C. Yet the cursed seed of Canaan, Canaan, as I said before, that would manifest 6,600 B.C. according to their history. So he says, was this a creation of a new being? Yes, this God, Yaqub, created his own Adam in his image and after his likeness. In the image of a human being and wicked and weak-minded, overcome with jealousies and envy, he was born with a complex of inferiority and to subject the world to their wish of superiority. A new man, a kind of man, simply mankind. The hidden meaning was in the real name, Patmos, Patmos. 
Patmos. That was the hidden name, right? The place of my own killing. That is Patmos. In the Aegean Sea. That is in Greece, where this mad scientist, Jacob, was to create a new race to destroy his own people and himself. Yet he died at age 150 and never saw the completion of his creation. They were all to be healthy, strong and good breeders. How was the new being going to be created? Okay, so Jacob made the flugorod by genetic splicing called grafting. They were called Jews, which became Jews later, called Jacobites, to show forth his power and his wisdom, declaring himself the righteous, and he can make a people genetically and mentally weak to give them the power to rule. Then he intended to eliminate them to show and prove that he is God, always was and always will be. So then what happened to his parents during this time? At the age of five years old, Jacob was left parentless. His mother, Lucianus, overcome by grief at the uh, remembrance of her home, Shambhala, died. His father, Yishuk, was put to death for violating the sacred oath of the Donakil by marrying Fukuras, his brother's wife. This further outraged um, Jacob, of course, because... He was already deranged. However, Jacob had started school at the age of four, and by age six, Jacob was living with his uncle Amo, right? With his uncle Amo, the brother of his father, Yishuak, who himself, many years before, was cast from Shambhala for disagreeable activity. Thus, he also took residence on the surface of the earth. Jacob was living with his Amo, with his uncle Amo, in his home. 20 miles outside of Becca. So then it goes on. Why did he start school so young? Don't forget, Jacob had two activated brains. He was fascinated by magnetism. Yeah. At the age of 18, Jacob had already finished all of the schools of learning in his day and time. This is where Jacob was to convert the people needed for the breeding of his new race. Um, and this is where the, the nation of Islam kind of pick up about the, his uncle and the magnetism, right? So um, this was where Jacob was to convert the people needed for the breeding of his new race in the task of making a disagreeable, wicked and physically weak being with the ability to rule with a special kind of reverse knowledge. So in the making of this new breed of people, he would use his own genes, being he was from an original black and brown germ. The black germ from his blood, the blood of the um, Donakil, and the brown germ from his blood, the blood of the terror, who had mixed with the Pleiadians long ago. For his master plan, he needed to convert loyal followers that would obey him regardless of who or what. This was executed by the loyal ones. Before this secret project could begin, there must be a great many people converted to his beliefs. So first, he travelled 20 miles inland from his uncle's house to the holy site where the tree of knowledge did sit. There he started to preach in the streets of Becca, again making such host of converts that the authorities increasingly concerned finally exiled him. He and a small band of his followers, the doctors, the nurses and the cremators, crossed northward up and over the Jordan and over to Egypt where they took ships into the Aegean Sea to await the arrival of his guinea pigs. He died of a brain tumour and an aneurysm at age 150. One brain exploded and killed him. That's before they arrived in the journey, right? So he died before then. But his scientists were prepared. The other scientists of his day said it couldn't be done. He departed, for they planned a plan to kill him and exile his followers. However, those who supported his undertakings prepared the greatest fleet of ships to sell. Haggai, with 59,999 followers, sailed on a journey for a home in Africa, there to stay for 50,000 years or until the new cycle. The journey took him and the, the prophet Jacob's followers completely around the continent. So they went around the continent of Africa. All right, and then 
but not before there was a great falling away and dissatisfaction amongst his Yaqub's followers. They docked along the shores of Africa. The original name of Africa was Nubia. They often mixed up the name Kuthites with the name Kushites. Remember, the Kuthites are where the Adam and Eve story in terms of um, Lilith and, and his father comes from. And then you have the Kushites as opposed to the Kuthites. The Kushites being um, Nikaba's family, Hatar and Anna. They were mixed, the Kuthites were mixed Hindus because remember that um, the Adam has, when you see him, he has that straight wavy hair. When um, Hindus having straight hair, six ether, these are the original black man called the Asiatic black man. Again, you can see how this is all tying into the story of diversion from the nation of Islam. Not to be mistaken with the incarnated gods who already lived in Africa and had woolly hair, nine ether. All along the coast, the people had black skin and straight hair, but the woolly haired people of that land refused to mix with them the law of Nu Nuapu. They supplanted themselves on the seashores of Mother Africa, mixing in and taking control. These black skin and stray hair tribes never ventured into the heart of Africa, but controlled the ports and the seacoast and fathered the slave trade right, of the woolly haired um, from Zanzibar. So when, you, when you're talking about the people say the, the, the slave trade was by black people, it was originally by these black straight hair six ether beings. All right, so given the slave, the original name Zinji. So when you hear the name Zinji, um, Zinji. Right, so that name Zinji, that was before the word Negro. Right. Okay, so Nubians fail to realize, or today you say that black people fail to realize that through slavery, your minds were stripped of the knowledge and what you did have. And this was done through one type of people, the ones that call themselves the Jews, right, today, Jacobites. So the question is asked, is it true that the Pell Jew was the first to start the slave trade in the new world? Answer, this is quite true. Jews who came over with Christopher Columbus returned with Native American to sell in Spain as slaves. Many of these Jews employed non-Jewish slave traders and dealers. The pale Jews were the largest dealers of slaves. And it shows a picture of Christopher Columbus. Where do the British and the Dutch come into the slave trade? Answer, Jews will be Jews whether they live in England, Holland or Israel. As mentioned before, some Jews employed the non-Jewish British, Spanish and Dutch as captains of ships and for other tasks. But the Jews were the kings of the slave trade. Do not think that slavery started all of a sudden on the continent of Africa. Slavery had existed in Africa and the Middle East since ancient times. Then the Jews, not Israelites, had begun the trade. It took a turn for the worst. For centuries... Jews had a hard time starting the slave trade in Africa because even though the pearl man had guns, he, was not a, he didn't have a match to the strength and the fighting skills of the African foreparents and their simple weapons. Yeah, that's, um, that's a story for another video, but um, we're going to just focus on the Yakub story, right? Because, um, like I said, it's a very complex story and unfortunately you have to just listen through it because it's a lot. Right, so people, um, the question is asked, it appears that because we were enslaved during the slavery and so forth, that the pearl race, um, the gravitation, Yaqub's gravitation was successful. And the master answers and he says, let me ask you a question. Why would you think it was a success? Because the things the pearl man has done to Nubians will explain their wickedness. And if Yaqub was successful with grafting a weak and wicked being, then he succeeded. By virtue of that fact, the pearl man is weak genetically because he lacks melanin and wicked because of all he has done and is still doing to other people. You are becoming racist again. I'm trying to break that spell. New beings, or as a new being, you must take on the responsibility for your own actions. Remember that these Asiatic black men are the descendants of the Hindu, right? 
the demons of the Hindu with black skin and straight hair who had a dissatisfied nature, evil dwelled within them. So the evil was already there. It was by the grace of their wise scientists who met with the elders of the Donakil did they decide to try to graft the evil out of their nature. The ultimate result was the flugorods. The flugorods came out of this genetic splicing and graftation in an attempts to remove their disagreeable side. For the evil lived within these Asiatic black men, the original Hindus, since their evil ancestors came to the planet 60 and 6 billion years ago. These Hindus are the ones who converted to Yaqub's plan. While living in Arabia, they became the tribe called Shesh Baza. This is again, you can see the tying into the story of the um, nation. So Shesh, Shesh Baza. B double Z A R, right? Okay, so yeah, they became known as the tribe. The tribe called Shesh, Shesh Bazar, the thirteenth tribe known as the Lost Tribe of Shabazz. So this is where the word Shabazz again tying into the uh, to the nation of Islam's teaching. All right, so named after Shesh Bazar, the scientists who carried out the gravitation for the for this weak and wicked beings of Yakub. And there's a picture of him there, if you can see that there, that's him, Shesh Bazaar. All right, so let's carry on. So many of the followers of Yaqub, because remember that he died, he didn't actually live to see his mission of grafting these beings, but his scientists that were loyal, that followed him, they carried on with the experiment, which took over a period of 600 years, and many died as he was going along the coast. Anyway, many of the followers of Yaqub got lost on the way. Those that survived the journey around Africa were used in the grafting and making of this new race. For any babies, this is how he did it, right? Actually, how we, for any babies that were born with black genes, he put a pin through their, through their brain. Then the next was the brown. They were spared to breed, so they made the red. Then the red, the yellow, and then from the yellow, the pearl. And the question is asked, how long did this take? Answer, this process took 600 years of grafting and separating. Thus, Yaqub's nation was born. A ruler was set over them. She was called Europa. That's spelled, you know, as Europe, but Europa, E-U, Europa. Right? That was the ruler that was set over them. So this Europa... Um, was the empress of the land. Yet without guidance, they regressed and took refuge in a place called Pelion. I-O-N. Pelion. Right? That is the Isles of Patmos. I'll just write it here. All right. So then on up into the mountain region of Thessaly and in the grotto or Grotti meaning caves. They conquered and enslaved the original inhabitants of that land, then called Yunnan. These savage beasts that were grafted from the Asiatic Hindu black men were nothing more than the original blonde haired, blue eye, pale skin, melanin lacking, grafted, disagreeable, rebellious seed of Yakub, the mad scientist. Shameless, moralist, hair covering three quarters of their bodies from ankle to shoulder, the beast of the field, also called Behemoth. They walked on all fours and ate flesh raw, having bestiality acts, thus the dog was the best friend. And it says, why is the dog considered to be man's best friend? And it goes on to say, because they allowed the dog to lick their leprous sores and to this day will allow them to sleep in their bed, eat of their plates, and even lick them in the mouth. The outcome of the graftation was the flugorods, bred by mixing in the seed of the Pleiadians, which is blonde hair and blue eye, mixing and grafting from the genes of the Asiatic black straight-haired and black-skinned and black-eyed Hindus, grafting from the brown germ to the red germ to the yellow germ onto the new earth, bred flugorods, also breeding the abstract 
black skin and blue eyed being. Yeah, so I mean, the story goes on and on and on, and I'm gonna try and cut it short, but just to tie it all up in a nutshell, we're saying that this person that people are calling Jacob or the big head scientist, he came about by way of two different races that were living in the caverns in the, in the world known as Shambhala, where you have many beings that coincide and live there. You had the Deros, who are the obese looking, and you had the Teros, which are the kind of like cone-head looking beings. And they were always fighting each other. But the Teros were supposed to really keep the, the Deros in check because the Deros are very aggressive, um, unruling, etc. Now, because of war going on between them all the time, the Donakil, they sought to have peace by mixing in with the Teros. And so what they did was, you know, gave a daughter from one tribe to the other. And that daughter wasn't happy because she wanted to marry amongst her own, which were Teros, right? The, the cone-shaped ones. And so she ran away. But um, so the, the mixture, the child that was born between her and um, the leader's brother, Fukua's brother, who was Isaac, they produced this child that was a mixture of the Donakil, who have big heads, and the Teros, who have the cone heads. And what happened was that Jacob was the result of that birth. And because he had a big head, because he had two brains, and he was being teased by both sides, ridiculed, and he wasn't happy about it. So he... And, and that there was an influence by the Pleiadians who could actually like telepathically influence him by controlling his brain. He was very intelligent, obviously, because he had two brains. He finished school early. And because he was constantly being teased and ridiculed, he said he's going to create a being that was weak and wicked so that he will get his revenge and to prove to them that he was the God. Because his plan was to create these beings and then kill them off after to show that he had control over them. Now, it wasn't just overnight because the whole plan was to take his genes and his blood and to produce offspring, which would have, would have come from the Donakil being the melaninated beings, and obviously with the, with the Teros, who would produce the brown, the brown germ. And then to take that, so what happened is all the children that were born, when they came, remember, this was done over a period of 600 years. Whilst he was, he had to get, he had to get followers. He had to basically um, build a crowd by preaching his doctrine and people that followed him. And he got ships, and he loaded his ships with his followers to go on this journey. And what he was doing was like throughout that period, he was doing this breeding of taking the dark to the brown, and then the brown to the yellow. Um, and then the, the yellow to the red, then to the pale. But what, how he did that was every child that was born that was dark, he would get rid of. Then the brown would then produce the children and then so on and so forth. So basically, like, if you kind of look at it like how, if you look at how Michael Jackson was, where he was dark, he had a big head, big nose, big lips, dark skin. And over a period of time, he went from being dark to light. He went from having a big nose to a straight nose big lips to thin lips and basically transform. So you can go from black to, to what people consider white or pale, but you can't go the other way around. So anyway, people were dying along the journey and this journey took 600 years. He himself died uh, along the journey because one of, his, uh, one of his brains exploded. So he didn't make it to see the end result. But however, he had loyal scientists that knew of his plan of what he was trying to achieve and they actually completed that and this would be what um, people are calling Jews today but they were originally Khazars and if you study the Jews you have two sects the Safradim and the uh, Ashkenazim which are descendants of these Khazars and so the word Jew as we have broken or I break down all the time is because they try to tie into the tribe of what they say Yehuda or Yehudi, that's what they say Jews are. 
and that will go to the tribe of Judah of the 12 tribes. Well, 13 if you include the, the female, but they're not the original um, tribe of Judah. They play on the word Judah with Jew, but they are from the, the what we call the Jacobites or um, the Jebus, the Jebusites from the son Jebus. But anyway, so that Yaqub story, as I've explained, is the same story that the nation of Islam tell, as you saw, because the, the person that was over that land, Shesh Bazar, is who they call Shabazz, where they say the tribe of Shabazz. And they refer to, if you look at the nation's teachings, as the original Asiatic black man. This is why in Wu Sabat we explain that we're not the original Asiatic black man. That's referring to the East Indians who are, although they are black, they're dark, they had straight hair. And our unique trait on the planet as um, Nagaru or Negroids is woolly 90 for hair. So that's where they kind of, they had the information of the story, but it got mixed up. And then in the Bible, in the biblical stories, they tell you about the story of, you know, um, Jacob and Esau and how the birthright was stolen. And, you know, that's a whole different story. But, yeah, so the, this Yaqub that people keep asking about, this is how he came about by these extraterrestrial descendants that lived in the inner world, or the caverns in the inner world called Shambhala, where you find many other beings that have been here for millions of years that have descendants on the planet. So when you look at everyone on the planet today, all the races, yeah, you will have the original forefathers who came from some other constellations, other planets, dwelled here in the caverns. Some of them remained in the caverns and don't come up to the surface. And others came up to the surface. So, like we talk about the Donakil, which ties into the Dungalawa, or the, the tribes in Nubia today, um, which refer to that, and that ties into the Watusi tribe. And then you have the other side, which is the Patarites, which ties into... Nikaba and her parents, Anath and Patar. So that's the black. And then you'll have like these conehead beings that come from Jomon, right? From Jomon. These are, these are where the Orientals, if you look at like the Chinese, they kind of look like them with, you know, the, 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 the features. And those are from Jomon. Then you look at people on the planet that are very obese, like they have a lot of weight. I'm not talking about people that just have weight, but the ones that are really obese to the point where they can't lose weight. That's because they have their genetics tied into these deros, right? Uh, um, and, and so everyone on the planet has some link to these extraterrestrials by way of their descendants in the, in the caverns. And some people have something called hirsutism. This ties into those duanis that we spoke about or the shaggy beans that you will find in ancient Sumeria with Enkidu, for example. Because when you look at the, the epics of Gilgamesh, his best friend was called Enkidu. And those Enkiduites are those hairy beings. So all the biblical stories, all the people on the planet, they relate or tie back into these extraterrestrials in some way, shape or form. And Yaqub's story is just one of those strange stories that got passed over and remixed. But it literally comes from him being you know, this, this, this birth between, you know, two different people. We talked about the Down syndrome as well, which is, you know, the terrors mixing in with people on the planet to produce, you know, we have 46 chromosomes, 23 chromosomes from your mum, 23 chromosomes from your father, giving you the 46. But with the mixture, with their having 48 um, chromosomes produces 47 chromosomes, which is what produces Down syndrome, and that's on every race. So if you look at a black, a white, an Asian person who has Down syndrome, they all, all have the same, the same features. This is why it literally just goes back down to the, to the DNA and the chromosome. So I hope that's helped. It's a long story, but um, I hope that's giving you a breakdown of Jakub, the big head scientist, that the story, obviously, over time, got diluted and mixed, all right?